Thank you for watching. My name is Shandy and I am your host today. Now I'm here with your usual host, Robbie, and he's decided to be in the hot seat. So Robbie is a multi-talented individual. He's a motivational speaker, an entrepreneur, a comedian, and much more. But you might know him as the founder of Lenneburg Academy and the host of Profile. He's passionate about leadership and mentorship and is here to share with us what drives him and hopefully inspire you to find your own drive in life. Help me welcome Robbie Genius. <laughs> Hi, Robbie Genius. How are you today? I'm doing awesome. I'm doing very great. That's great. Yes. Now, I've got a question for you. I have a lot of questions for you, actually. <laughs> um, <All right. laughs> but the first question I have is Genius. Okay. Robbie Genius. Is that your real name? <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Okay. No. All right. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an idea of what's not real about it, where it came from, anything? Like, how'd you come up with that? First of all, my right name is Leighton Robinson. Mm. Yes. Very regal. Yes. Very regal. No, the name Robbie came from Robinson. Right. I'm from Jamaica. In Jamaica, we are a last name society, ah. which means we call it each other by their, our last name. Okay. Right. Okay. So. At first, they were calling me Robinson, right. and then by 2002, yeah. someone called me Robbie. Okay, yeah. I see where it comes from. Yes. So you go, you really, you're, you're here, and you really go by your last name, yes. Robbie, yes. your nickname, last name, yes. Robbie, and then you added, where did the genius part come from? Yeah. No, that's funny. <laughs> in, 2000, in 2005, mm -hmm. uh, I had my daughter, my baby girl. No, by the time she was six months, I observed something about her. She was, you know very smart and so I started calling her a genius you know every time she she does something I would say you know you're a genius no in 2008 when she was about three years old I said she did something again and I was like you know you're a genius and she looked at me and said no you are a genius and we were back and forth no right. you're a genius and after a while I'm like hmm you know you're right <laughs> <laughs> so say hi Hi. No, you say hi. I already say hi. Hi. Yeah. Okay, yes. alright. And then I put it beside Robbie and I said, Robbie Genius. And I'm like, I like it. I like it. And since 2008, that's the name I've been using. But I see it as a brand name. I'm, I see it as more of a name that can, is, can stand out more than Leighton Robinson. So I changed my name. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned something in what you just said. You said Jamaica and last names. Can we talk a little bit about your background? Certainly. Yeah. Sure. So tell me, okay, so you said you're from Jamaica. Let's start, you know, where you grew up, okay. like how life was, like a little bit about that. Just give us an insight to who you are. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica mm -hmm. in the late 70s. I have six of us, four boys, two girls. I grew up in Seaview Gardens. The beginning for me was a bittersweet, I would like to call it, where it was rough, really, really rough. I've experienced hardship, hardship, you know, the family, the community, the country now on a whole. I started off at Seaward All Age School. Again, that was a challenge for me because I could not read. There was too much going on in my life, in my head, blockage. I could not read properly, but I was gifted as a math student. And that saved me because I remember when it was time to graduate high school, my mother registered me into a school called Tarrant Secondary School because no one expected anything of me, not even me, myself. However, last minute, I got the news that I had passed for Jamaica College, one of the, the top five schools in Jamaica. I went to Jamaica College. That mathematical ability of myself developed and the school recognized it. And as a result, I started to tutor my classmates, maths and other sciences such as physics. I graduated with distinction in math. 
Here's an interesting story. I remember when I finished high school and I wanted my certification so that I could move on, whether to go to university or to get a job. The school held on to the certificate because I didn't pay the school fee for a number of years. My parents could not come up with the money. One day down about a month later, my, my mother and I went to the school and we begged the school to release the certificate so that I could move on. And my mother promised them to pay the school fees sometime later. Yes. And as a result, we have decided that we are not going, I'm not going to university because it's, it's rough. As a result, I decided I'm going to look at job. Now, that, from that tutoring of matter at school, I wanted to continue that journey because I saw how it helped me and I saw how I've helped a lot of people in, in my high school. And as a result, I applied to the Ministry of Education for a position that is called pre-trained teacher. It is, the requirement is a high school certificate. I started teaching. I taught two years with the government. Are you at an elementary school? Are you... So the first year I taught out of grade four. The second year I did grade seven to nine, I became more specialist. I, I did maths, science, and, and drawing. Okay, oh wow. Over those two years, what I've observed was when I started teaching, I had this passion, this drive. I want to help these students. I was like, listen, education helped me. It can help you too. Let me show you how. But what I found is that I struggled. I struggled. I could not get the students to pay attention. I could not get them to learn. And I, and, and I, and I started to beat on myself like, what am I doing wrong? Why can't I get these students to learn? It, it wasn't working for me. As much as I was passionate and loved it, it wasn't working. So I changed gear, engineering, my second love. Again, I couldn't read properly. As such, engineering was my best choice. You know, I was good at maths, drawing, physics, the sciences, perfect field. I got into engineering and I studied. But here's the thing, while I was studying, there's there this lady, an administrator mm -hmm. in the School of Engineering, named Miss Anita Dunkley. I remember she took me on as her son. She said to me one day that, find your way to school and I will give you lunch. And she did that for, for a couple of years. And sometimes I would walk to school just to get there. But I know I'll get something to eat, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how I made it. Growing up, uh, there were some things that I recognized that were missing from my life, from, from the community, right? One of the things was mentorship. Now, you had your parents, mm -hmm. and there were six of you, kids, mm -hmm. right? So you just mentioned mentorship. Yes. So parents would generally mentor their children. Yes. And you said you were questioning things, and you were asking questions why. So are you saying that your parents at the time didn't were not able to provide for answers, or did you just have a lot more questions than they could answer? It would be more questions than they could have answered. Because the thing about my parents, they weren't properly educated. Okay. They never had proper jobs. They were, my mother was a helper. She would, you know, every day she would go around the community, knocking on doors, you know, trying to get a day job. My father, he was a tailor. He, he designed and made clothes. Again, oh. it was hustling. You know, it, it's unreliable, right? Yes. They were uneducated and they, they were born and raised in the culture, right? And all they knew or knew at the time was the way things were. And I figured, I don't know if they have asked the same questions that I've asked, but they could not help us on the level that we want. And what did I, what did I want? I want to elevate, to change my circumstance. I, I could feel it. Right. that life can be better. 
it doesn't have to be this way. I don't know the answer, but I just, I just sense it. And while I was studying it at UTEC, I pounced on the answer, one of the answers. I, I found out about something that's called Maslow Hierarchy of Needs. It talked about five levels of needs. And one of the things that I've learned from that was we focus on, our, on the lowest need that is not fulfilled, no matter which level we are at. And then I looked back at the students in those communities that I was teaching and I realized that a lot of those students, they didn't know what, where their meal was going to come from. They weren't sure where they're going to get a good sleep tonight. They don't know if they were going to get home safe that night. And I realized those were the things on their mind. As, as, as a result, education was way out of their thought or reach. They were focusing on those basic needs. A light bulb went off in my head. And I said, I'm going back. But this time I'm not going as a teacher. I'm going as a mentor and as a motivational speaker and I shifted gear and since then my focus is on personal development and mentorship, leadership, helping people to understand who they are and what they want for their life and also to recognize the importance of your needs why do I care so much and why do I want to make such a big difference in this world I would say it's because of the pain that I felt with the life that I had and the things that were missing from my life I want to be that person to guide others so they don't feel the pain that I felt where I grew up in in Kingston, there weren't many options to, to have a change in life, right. right? There were certain things that worked, such as the music. A lot of colleagues, they went as artists, singers. A few of them did sports. Some did track and field. The vehicle out of poverty weren't that many. For me, I wasn't good at any of the above. What was left? Education. So I went that route. When I was in high school and the teacher asked, what do you want to do, to go on to university to, to do? I remember what the students said. There, there were answers such as, I want to be a police officer. I want to be a fireman. I want to be a teacher. There was a lawyer. Come up. The options were limited in the minds of the students because that's all we knew. That's all we, we see whenever we step outside. We have never seen uh, a pilot. You know, we have never seen you know, any specialists. We have never seen billionaires. We have never seen. So we cannot even think of those options to say that's what I want to emulate or to be. And that is where mentorship comes in. And when you to ask about my parents to say, why could they have mentored us? Not really. Because the only thing they can talk, tell us about is to hustle. If they tell you to hustle, it's because they have been hustling. So they're teaching you what they have experience or what they know yes okay so in essence what you were saying is mentorship comes from um, learning from other people's experience yes uh, okay yes and so yes. when I'm you're coaching. also mm -hmm. saying that people only know police officers and stuff because that is what they've experienced yes so learning about higher levels of income or different types of living and career fields yeah right right so tell me what is the difference between the two because you, you talked about education being a way out but you also said that um you saw a need for mentorship so what's, what's the difference good mentorship is the guidance you get 
to help you to make decisions and help you to, to understand anything to, and also to help you to answer any question you may have, right? Academics will prepare you to learn a specific, special skill. Personal development, in my opinion, comes first. You need to know what, what personal development does. It, it helps you to figure out who you are and what you want. Right. Want for yourself, for your life. Where are you going? I wanted to start my first business as a math tutor. As a result, I went to my alma mater, my primary school, and I rented a class room from the principal. No, I created flyers and I walk around to the community and I issued those flyers to all the household. And when I went back to the community and said, I, I want to tutor you guys maths, they were excited because they were like, Whoa! Do it! We welcome it! And as a result, they all signed up. Now, on the first day, my classroom was full with, with people of the community, all age groups. And when I looked, I was one of the youngest person in the classroom. I, I, I felt good. At the end of the first semester, I closed on that business for one reason. I didn't make any money. No one in the classroom paid me, not one. All right. And I could not continue to pay the rent because it was coming out of my pocket. It is what it is. Anyway, I closed down that business as a result and I moved on. Just so you know, the name of that business was Lenebour Academy. Yeah. 1996. That's when Lenebour Academy started. Tell me a little bit about, more about um, Lennybor Academy and you know educate our viewers here on you know what it really is and how it's supposed to work and you know here's a little okay. Lennybor, you may be wondering what it means. Now, Lennybor essentially is my name, right? It came from Leighton Robinson. I got the idea from a group, a rock group who came to Jamaica in 1990, 91 for a concert, crisscross. What I notice about them is the way they dress and the way they wrote their name. They dress with their clothes back way and they also wrote their name back way, right? I was, I was like, I like that. What can I do with that idea? So I look at my name, Leighton Robinson. So I remove the lay and the robin, flip it back way to get Nibor. And that's how Lenibor came about. What is Lenibor Academy's why? Our why is that we want to help others to discover who they are and to find the greatness in themselves and to know that anything is possible. The academics, is not the most important lesson. Personal development, understanding who you are and what you want, right? As a result, I, want, I, I, I shifted from academics and now focusing on personal development, leadership, mentorship, coaching. We're here today, mm -hmm. everybody, <laughs> and we're on profile. Yes, we are. Right, so tell me how that started. All, everything that I've done so far linked to my personal life and experience, mm -hmm. right? One of the things that I've learned, realized, is that we learn from each other. A lot of my development came from listening to other people's story, learning from people. Motivation and inspiration come from seeing someone achieve something you are trying to achieve that's empowering you know yeah that's you know as a result I, I said to myself I want to use people's story because I realize that all of us have the ability to inspire others because we are more alike than we are different and whatever we are going through, there are people around us 
I've gone through it, I've experienced it, and I've overcome it. Therefore, I created Profile to do that, to use people's story to inspire others. So that's really valuable, actually. It is. Like yes. A lot of people have never even thought of that. Yes. So far on yes. Profile, yes. I've brought in a few people. Right. A lot of them have never told their stories before. And they have never seen value in their stories before right. until they came here and share it. And they get feedback from people who said, thank you. Right there and then I said, Profile and Lenny Boer Academy are achieving its goals. And I, and, and I want to continue to do that. that that's very valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, I want to switch gears a little bit. Um, you know, make it a little more about you specifically. So tell us, right now you mentioned your father was a tailor, mm -hmm. right? And I see you have this wonderful suit jacket and you know your pants were very well curated. I've, every time I've seen you, I've seen you in a suit. So tell me a little bit about that. It's, it's totally off topic, but why are you always in a suit? It's no accident. Intentional. Growing up, when I was young, I picture myself one day owning a, a big corporation. Okay. Yeah. I picture myself achieving success, and I, I picture myself the CEO. You know, walking through my organization, mm -hmm. well dressed, presenting myself. And I said, I'm starting today to be that person. Yeah. And so every day I dress like that. That's good. Yes. You know, dress how you want to be addressed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's lovely. Okay, so then tell me, you mentioned success, mm -hmm. right? What is success to you? What does that look like? I remember one day when we were young, my mother said to us, out of frustration, that since since I have you guys, I've never worn a, a new pair of shoes. Yeah. I remember I looked at our feet and I realized it's it's it is true. I, I, I it was true. You know, and, and I made a decision there and then that one day I'm gonna make her wear all the new shoes she would like and anything else her heart desire. You know. No matter what I've achieved so far, I don't feel like I've hit reach that success yet. That's fine. But I think everybody's hard on themselves more than other people. So yeah. that's, you're in the right place, I think. <laughs> okay. So tell us, mm -hmm. um, what's your next steps? There are a few things I want to accomplish over the next five years okay. with Lenibor Academy. I want to grow profile and I want to add a few more programs. I want to touch on love and happiness. Because that's something I see very important. A lot of people are divorced, single. There are a lot, tons of single parents. I'm, I want to touch that topic and find out what's going on. Why? The youth, I want to do a program with the youth. I want to bring in 19 years and younger and talk to them. How are you thinking? What's going on? How do you see the world? How do you see the future? How do you see us older folks? I want to know what's going on in their head. Right? I want to touch on entertainment. Right. Yes, I want to promote upcoming artists and talent. Right. Those are programs in the pipeline over the next two to five years. There are three things that I want in, in my life to accomplish. I want to accomplish that organization, that, that you know, global business. I'm working on it. I want to become a great speaker. I want to become a motivational speaker. And I want to inspire people all walks of life. I want to be a great leader. Yes. I want to lead a nation. I'm thinking of either Canada or Jamaica. But I'm leaning towards Jamaica because I'm from there, born, raised there. I understand the culture. I understand what's missing, what's needed. And I feel like I can move this country forward 
and I would love the opportunity to one day do it. So tell me, how do you see yourself achieving all of that? I've observed one thing so far. A lot of people have reached out to me. You know, they appreciate what I'm doing and they want to see how they can help. And I am and I, experiencing a lot of support and help so far from the community. Thank you. I want to partner with the local government because what we are doing affects the community. And I want to see how we can work together because we are trying to achieve the same goal. I also want to partner with other organizations, profitable and not-for-profit organizations, schools, other events organizations, you name them. Again, we're, we're, we're doing the same thing. We're going the same direction. Let's go together, right? And I'm looking for partnerships, for partners and investors in this business. That's how I see we're going to make this work. Uh, any messages or anything you want to tell the people? Lenibor Academy and Profile. These ideas have been in my head for years. Right. And it was there. I, 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 I always ask myself questions like, would anyone, anyone watch them? Would anyone care? I want to be a public speaker. Would anyone listen to me? Those are questions I always ask. And those are some of the reasons that things took so long to get going yeah. until I finally build up the courage and the confidence to get started. Right. No, we're going somewhere. And profile has been well received by the community, by the wider society. It means everything to me. Thank you. Thank you everyone for supporting, for watching, for, for your feedback. I've received a lot of feedback, very good feedback, and we, 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 we implement them because we want to grow. And this, what we are doing is for you, right? I must say, my parents, I want to say thank you. Thank you for doing such a great job with what you had. My siblings, my family, thank you. My, my sister, Shandine, you're very special to me. You're, you are my biggest cheerleader. You have been by my side from when we were kids and you supported me in everything that I've done. And you continue to support me even today. She came on profile. And, you know, she, she, she showed me some love and some strength. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. And, of course, my daughter, my, my pride and joy, Ashley. You are the true genius in the family, and you will always be. You know, thank you for being great, and thanks for making me proud every day. There you go, girl. We are going about 100 kilometers per hour now. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Where to go? I have no idea. Just keep driving. I have to say thanks to my team for sticking by my side. In fact, I want to say that my team work harder on this business than I do. Can't ask for more. Thank you. Uh, I want to say thanks to you for to you, Shandy, for stepping up. For doing this for me, I appreciate it, and I know I will see a lot more of you. Yes. Well, thanks for having me here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today uh, to hear his story, the man behind everything. We hope to see you again on another profile, and enjoy the rest of your day. Hi, my name is Shandy Watley, and thanks for watching Profile. I was your temporary host for today. Don't worry, Robbie will be back uh, next week. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at mainattraction001. Thank you for watching and thank you for supporting us. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.